Okay, Sadhguruji, let me take you away from this and let me take you to a world of, say, films, where I come oh. from. Years ago, when films started and, you know, through the 60s, 70s, there were lovely stories, nice values, beautiful music, lyrics. By the time I was the star in movies, some of our jhatka matkas might have shocked the previous generations and they must have said, what is all this? But it was still within limits. Whose limits? I mean, what's acceptable to society, whatever. I mean, I'll say, and then now, today, the, the complexion of films, the kind of films we see, you know, it's, um, it's little clothes, <laughs> it's um, live-in relationships are, you know, up there on screen for everybody to see and nightclub culture. I mean, it sometimes worries me that my children are growing up now, this is what they're seeing, this is, these are the kind of songs that they're listening to, the lyrics are about, you know… Uh, From Janam Janam to expiry date songs. Yes. So, this is the… F this is what they're watching, this is what they think is cool, this is the… this is the hip and happening stuff. So with such a young nation growing up on this, this is the feed, <laughs> this is what you see, this is what you hear. I'm just a little concerned as to what they will turn out to be. I'm sure your parents were concerned too. They <laughs> okay, so can I… I... I'm sure my <laughs> parents were very concerned when I was growing up. So every parent has this concern, every generation has this concern that the next generation is going wrong, always. I understand what you're saying. This sudden change, if every generation likes to go one step beyond where the previous generation has stepped in, on ev almost everything, just for the sake of doing something different, or it's natural, they've grown up in one atmosphere, they take it they to another to level. The next level. Yes. Uh, next is not always next. <laughs> That's what you're saying, right? Yes, it's okay. not higher, it's okay. someone else, it's, it's just… It's just next. It's… N so, this concern is always there but right now, the change that is happening is not the next. It is a serious influence because in the last fifteen years, the world's ability to communicate across cultures and borders is so heavy and so unprecedented. Nobody has ever been used to this kind of influences before. Okay, never before. This level of influence on our young people, never before possible, no other generation has ever experienced this kind of onslaught from so many directions and the volume of influence is too big. So, uh, in terms of changes are happening, not… it is not next, it is simply somewhere and nobody knows where it is because it's too complex and too mixed. Nobody knows where it is including the young people, it's just a mix of things. So this is because of a sudden onslaught of information and communication. It is not for us to judge whether it's good or bad, it is just that definitely this level of information. When I say information, it's like when we were growing up, I believe it was true for your generation also, we never knew what is boredom, okay? There was no such thing, we were just excited about everything that came our way. <laughs> but you see today twelve-year-old kids, if you tell them what, oh, <laughs> yes. you see, they're yes. just bored because they know the whole cosmos, they've, it's, they've seen it on their phone screen, not even on the computer screen. <laughs> on the phone screen they've seen entire cosmos, they know everything. Things that you do not know, they know, you ask them, they know it <laughs> Yes. by information. By the time they are eighteen, they have had five love affairs and gone. In the Western world it's like that, here also it's beginning to happen, okay? <laughs> so by the time they are eighteen, they've seen everything that you need to see with body, mind, emotion, okay? By the time they're twenty-five, what? What next? What next? No. Yes. You will see, this is not my wish. But this is something that I see, the way people's minds are working, the way they're being laden with information. Uh, I'm not a, by any standards a pessimistic person, but I'm just seeing this. If this level of information continues and it'll multiply manifold for the coming generations, 
you should not be surprised in the next fifty to hundred years, if fifty percent of the human population choose to commit suicide, you should not be surprised because that is what will happen to the mind. Somebody is clapping, look at this, it's popular. <laughs> no, you have just touched a chord, that's… No, I mean, I'm saying I think we realize today, something… Today, yes. this day, more people commit suicide in this world than all the wars and murders and accidents manage to kill. And if this level of information onslaught continues on human mind, I know the nature of mind absolutely, because I know my mind. I know how it works, what it can handle, what it cannot do, I know it clearly what human mind is. That's the reason why I don't have to uh, read people's books or listen to their entire thing. If they say one sentence, I know what their mind is. Because I know the structure of human mind entirely, otherwise I won't be who I am. So I'm saying this, if this level of information onslaught continues at the same pace or at higher pace, which is possible in the next few years, this will definitely lead to wanting to terminate yourself because there will be nothing to live for. There is no joy and excitement about anything. You look back at your own life, those of you who are over fifty years of age, just look back at your, your own life. When you were twelve, fifteen, was there any room for you to get bored about anything? Simply you were excited about every little thing, isn't it? Today you will see it's almost a common feature. Twelve, fifteen-year-old kids are just bored. Only thing is… Yes, they're all on iPads, okay. iPhones, because yes, they're on gadgets. Because we're talking about love and life, all this will not mean nothing. Because you had one love affair when you were eighteen years of age, you thought this is your life and you're going to willing to die for it, whether you died for it or not, but at least at that time you thought you'll die for it, okay? <laughs> Today by the… on Facebook they had twenty-two love affairs going simultaneously <laughs> It just means nothing. I'm not saying they should have it or not have it. All I'm saying is this will lead to a certain overload on the mind and suddenly a human being will think, why am I here? You know that big Shakespearean question, to be or not to be, yes. is not the most intelligent question. Unfortunately, people think so. This is only because you have not been touched by life. You are not a piece of life, you are just a psychological case. You are full of thoughts and emotions, you have not touched life at all. You think your thoughts and emotions are life? No. Your thoughts and emotions are the drama that you are creating in your mind, it is your cinema. You must be able to end it somewhere. If you do not know how to put the end, then it's going on endless cinema, you are going crazy. Life is happening here. Life is not… you know, your work is not life, your family is not life, your career is not life, your cinema is not life, your thought is not life, your emotion is not life. Life is happening here, everything else is accessories to life. Now the frills of life have become larger than life itself. Life is entirely missed. If you touch life within you, then it's an explosion of energy. When such a thing never happens to you because you have information about the whole cosmos on your phone screen. You will never be touched by life because too much information, too much thought, even emotion is drying up, too much thought. 